Now that we've left the recording interface, we are back with the familiar PowerPoint interface. And the first thing I'd like to draw your attention to is that there is a speaker symbol on this slide, which indicates that there's a narration that has been recorded on this slide. And if we explore the next slide, you'll see that there's a little video clip there. Uh, because that's what we did in the previous video. And you can see that there is a speaker icon here as well, which indicates there's narration on this slide. You'll also notice that the annotation that we made during the narration has also been recorded there. And on the fourth slide, we did not add any narration, so there's no speaker icon visible there. And we did not add any narration on the last slide either. The next thing I'd like to point out is that if you went to a slide that has a narration on it and if you were then to go into your transitions tab and come over here to the timing area, you'll notice that the after property has been ticked and there's a particular timing value that has been populated there. Now you might wonder where PowerPoint got that timing from. I can confirm that that timing is the timing of a particular narration that is on that particular slide. So for example, this narration, I can confirm that it is approximately 14 seconds, which is where PowerPoint has got that timing from. And if I was to move on to the next slide and just check that video recording, make sure that you're on the transitions tab, come over to the timing section and you'll see that there is a timing there of approximately 10 seconds. And if I was to check the duration of this recording, it's approximately 10 seconds. Now this is great because this means that the timing of these slides will match the duration of your narrations and recordings on them. Please note, however, that if you edit the duration of a narration or video recording, you must remember to change the slide timings to match. Let's now explore how you might edit out any mistakes or unwanted sections from your narrations. What you need to do is simply pick the speaker icon and right click. You will then find that you have a whole load of options that open up to you, but the one that we're looking for is trim. So I'll click on trim and that opens up the editing interface. And a few things to make note of here is that you have a total duration of 13, approximately 14 seconds there. And your start time is zero and your end time is obviously the same as your duration. So what we're going to do is we're going to first off play this back. Understanding, <clears throat> understanding solar power. I'll stop there so you can see that I've made a bit of a mistake there at the beginning. So what I can do is use this little green handle here which helps me to mark my in point. I'll simply click on it and drag it up to the point where my second take of the headline is the correct one, the one that I want to use. And I'll play that back once again. Understanding solar power. So I'll stop there. So that's great. That's the bit I want. And to leave this unnecessary bit out, all I'll need to do is simply pick my red handle, which is the out point marker, and I'll drag it up to there. And I'll simply play this back again. Understanding solar power. So there you go. I've got just the bit I need and I've effectively left out that first bit at the beginning and that bit at the end as well. As it currently stands, PowerPoint will only allow us to trim at the very beginning or at the end. We cannot trim or remove bits from the middle of your recording. If you needed to remove a bit of audio from the middle of a recording, there is a workaround that I've demonstrated in the advanced editing video. So please remember to check that out. I might also point out that you could actually position this green in marker and the red out marker by simply using the little frame up and frame down arrows here. And similarly, the out point can be controlled with these two up and down arrows as well. Please note that any edits you make here are non-destructive, meaning that if you were to save your PowerPoint and open it up on another day, you would still have access to the sections that you've edited out here, which means you can refine or change the edit points if you needed to. Now, before I go and click OK, I'd like to point out that this recording was originally approximately 14 seconds, and now the new edited duration is only two and a half, approximately three seconds. So let's make note of that because we are now going to have to change the slide duration to match this new edited timing. So I'll click OK. 
and then I'll come over here to my slide timing, I'll click in here and I'll change that to five seconds. So I'm just going to add one extra second just so that it has a little bit of a cushion. You're more than welcome to of course add four or five seconds depending on how you'd like to space out your narrations. And remember that you only need to do this if you edited or changed the duration of your narration on that slide. If you did not make any changes to your narration, you do not need to change your advanced slide timing. Let's now quickly review our other recordings on the other slides and see if there's any changes necessary. So I'll simply click on the video and I'll right click and once again I'll pick trim. That brings up the editing interface. You'll notice of course that this time we have the video appearing here whereas with the audio clip we just had the audio appearing at the bottom. So let's see how we edit this. I'll simply play this back. Hi, I'm Kevin and I'll be your teacher this semester. So if you have any queries, don't hesitate to get in touch with me. So that recording appears to be fine. There's not too much that needs to be edited out. I'm quite happy with the start position, but I will remove a little bit of that gap from the end. So I'll grab the out point handle from over there, move it forward. Looks like I'm still talking there. I'll move it back. So that seems to be fine. And I'll make note that the new duration is approximately eight seconds. And I'll go ahead and click OK. Next, I'll ensure that I'm on the transitions tab. Come over to my advanced slide and look at the after section here. And note that it's currently set to 10 seconds, which is not too bad considering that the recording has only been edited down to eight seconds. But I will go in and type in nine seconds just to give it about a second of padding. So that's sorted as well. Let's move on to the next slide. I'll click on the speaker icon, right click once again and pick trim. And let's listen to this. What is solar power? Let's explore this. Energy created. So all that section's good. We'll keep moving forward. Eat air, water or other substances. So there you go for everyone. Right, so I finished the slide narration itself just about here and then I've added some additional audio there. So I'll simply grab the red out point handle and mark an out point there. I'm quite happy with the start position. Let's just quickly click over there, play back from that point to see whether we are ending at the correct time or at the correct point. Converted into electricity or used to heat air, water or other substances. So that's perfect, got the correct out point. I'll make note that the new duration is 30.459, so let's say 31 seconds, and then I'll go ahead and click OK once again. Once again, ensure that you're on the Transitions tab and come over to the Advanced Slide section, come here, and I'll change that to 31 seconds. Normally, when you add narrations to PowerPoint, whether it be audio or audio and video, you will find that if you pick the narration and go to your playback tab, you'll note that it is set to playback automatically, which is great because normally when you're presenting, uh, you might want to set your media to playback when clicked on, but when you're exporting them to video, you would always have them set to automatically. And you do not have to do this for all your narrations because thankfully when you add narrations and video recordings, they are set to playback automatically by default. Now I will move on to my next slide however and click on this bit of media which is not a video recording. It's not one that I recorded and added in. This is a pre-recorded video that I've added into my PowerPoint and I need to ensure that this video is also set to playback. So I'll go to the playback tab and ensure that it is set to playback automatically. Now you need to check these because you may have at the point of creating your PowerPoint set your media to playback when clicked on, which is quite normal in a classroom scenario. But since we're preparing this presentation for video, you do want to ensure that they're all set to automatically. Now that that's all done, we are ready to export this PowerPoint to a video file.